Alrighty, fish and freaks. I am back here at the treehouse today. Literally just got back from the Bassmaster Classic. We did a meetup over there at the Ketchco uh, Fish Wagon, and it was awesome. We met hundreds of you, and I always like to ask when I'm around you guys in person, like, what do you like to watch? What are what are you into? What are the videos that pop the most for you? It's always a mixed bag, though. Some people love the straight fishing videos. Some people like the hunting videos. Some people just like, you know, hanging out here with the fam. And I always hear that with, uh, with the wives and girlfriends as well. So I thought I would cover a little bit of everything today in a vlog. There is one main important thing we got to do today. And that is get the silver bullet all cleaned out. Because I'm done with it. I'm done with that boat. It has been a good horse. Uh, but we've ridden it long and hard and put it up wet and now it's time to take it back to fun and sun and uh, They're going to put it on the market for somebody bass boats are tough to come by right now So I'm sure someone is going to enjoy the silver bullet But I'm done with that boat and I got a call a few days ago saying the new one is in so I'm gonna give you guys a full walkthrough tour on the new one got a few upgrades It's gonna be a nice little deal, but I want you to know I'm standing here in this peach tree because I want you to look at something. The buds. The buds are happening. Those were not popping before I left for the classic. So uh, things are popping off in this area. And I've kind of been chasing the spawn this year. Uh, it's been great. You know, I started out in Mexico, uh, fish moving up on beds, bloody tails. Then I went to Florida, fish moving up, bloody tails. Um, then I went down to the Choke Canyon as well. Um, fish, some fish were moving up on beds, literally caught my first sight fish, mixing a little, um, ivy trip with, with John. Uh, those fish were definitely not close to spawning, but they were pre-spawn munching. And, you know, I come back here to North Texas every year and it's like, it's, it's a month behind everything else. So I don't want to get my hopes up, but when things start budding, that's good. And also, since springtime is here, we're going to be getting some chickens soon. I don't know what kind of breed, but we're going to be getting some chickens back in the Rackley Roost. Miss our eggs, miss our chickens, but, you know, they got eaten if you guys missed that, that video. But anyways, uh, we're going to be getting some new chickens now that this bad cold weather is over and we can raise some chicks or some pullets. Anyway, we'll get to the boat here in a minute, clean it out. Let's go inside. Let's check in with the fam, see what's going on. I already went inside. This is like my first first encounter, but something new and exciting. I gotta show you guys too. Steph told me about sitting right here. This just came in from YouTube. So I wasn't even sure if they even give these things out anymore, but you know, hit a million subscribers. And uh, thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Helping us get to the million, and I guess they give the, they're still giving these million sub plaques out. So this was at my desk where Steph puts all my mail and stuff, and I just want to take a take a gander at it. It says, "Congratulations, you did it." No, we did it. Fish and Freaks did it. We are honored to uh, take part in recognizing your achievement. Blah, 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 YouTube things. Is that an actual signature by Susan? I really wonder. Ah, uh, that's probably printed on. Lake Fork guy. Million subs. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I never thought I would get to a million subs. So this is a, this is a pretty cool accomplishment. It's a nice little plaque to here they give you. Um... But man, been, been doing YouTube over 10 years, I guess 12 years. It's not nearly as cool as the day that I actually hit a billion. You know, this is like many months later, but it's a nice reminder. So it's pretty cool. It's going to go up here on the wall. Look at that gorgeous crappie right there, everybody. I'm ready for that crappie season. It's here. It's here right now. Crappie spawn right before the bass. So it's, it's, it's going off right now. I've been so focused on bass. But a little update. Um, this fella right here, Jeremy Zettler, who, who drew this, um, I'm going to be getting this tattooed on my body. And I haven't been able to go up to Canada uh, because of the crazy border situation. But uh, anyway, that's in the works. He's going to be coming down to Texas. So anyway, going to be getting that, that tat. Let's check it with the fam up here. 
Let's do a little fam check. Hey, I went, hey, I had a gummy worm for a great party. You did? I'm yeah. glad you let them all know that. You already got a gummy worm? Well, she just went potty, so I put it on her plate. Oh, you did? You gave her one of those rainbow mm -hmm. gummies from Bucky's? It tastes like rainbow. Oh, did you love it? Yeah. It was so, was it so good? <clears throat> yes, welcome to my side of the family. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, I got my hair done by well, Amy. Hang on, little Ben's posing. He's, he's cheesing up in here. And he just pooped, so he's happy. No. Look at that. You like my hair? I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's beautiful decor. Mm -hmm. Amy did it. This is lunchtime yeah. with the fam. Mm -hmm. And little Ben is about ready to crawl. You know, he's, he's about ready to crawl up in that deer blind next year with me, boy. Give me some. Yeah, you've already been, <laughs> you, you've, you've already been in the deer blind, which, mm -hmm. which is what is, that's pretty crazy. So give the fish and freaks and the lake lifers a little update here. I got on, you sandwich. <laughs> on your, uh, on your life. Oh, this is it. You're looking at it. These two, keeping these two alive, and you. And keeping, me. Keeping you alive, too. Yeah, arguably, I'm <clears throat> the biggest crowd here. My life is uh, between this level of the house, between the kitchen and kids' rooms, 100% of the time. <clears throat> that you're looking at it. Well, we appreciate it. Hey, I can't. We complain. appreciate you. I can't. Complain. This channel wouldn't exist without you and your assistance. You're just mm. such a happy baby. He is. He's probably oh. sitting on a massive poopy and he's just smiling. He loves it. <laughs> Amy, how come you weren't that happy when you were a baby? Um, I'm gonna go take a picture of my food. That's oh. my camera. You gonna put that on Instagram? No, I'm not. <laughs> it's just funny because she sees me take pictures of food and so now she's like all about it. I'm gonna take a picture of my grilled cheese over here. She's a healthy chew. <laughs> She did, she did tell me one day, it was really cute. You know, she watches me cook every night. She goes, Mom, one day I'm going to cook with you. I, I try to get her in the kitchen to cook, but it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> you put that DSLR on there. Just making a food vlog real quick. Got gotcha. it. <laughs> Is it a good one? Can't oh. really see. It's still on live view. but It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. I trust it was one? good. Hey, I saw you in front of some Guggen Bates the other day. Uh, was that Academy? Yeah. Mom showed me a picture of that. Is, what were those? What were those things you were taking a picture with? Fishies. 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 Yeah, they were all the fishy worms. Yeah. So what's, what's funny is she just knows them as little fishies in Dad's garage and in his boat that she gets to cut up. She likes to take my little scissors and... Cut them up like like Play-Doh. She has these little Play-Doh scissors. She cuts you know little Play-Doh things, and makes shapes and whatnot. So she thinks it's fun to take uh, you know sometimes she just takes brand new baits out of the pack when I'm not looking and cuts them up and just makes a pile, and makes you know plays with them basically and and yeah then you throw them away. So it's funny that she she doesn't really know what Dad does for a living, but she knows those as her fishies. You have them in your purse? Yes, they're all over there, they're all over the house. And like, I think today I saw one in my purse, you know. What do you think about the smell? About the smell? Pretty good. A Guggenbait smell? Yeah, it's pretty good, right? It's got anise in it. Did you know that? I didn't, I don't honestly smell it. Give it a good whiff next time, you'll appreciate the flavor. That's gonna go in the garage. I've got, I've got some more things to show the fishing freaks. I've got a new time consuming vice that we show them. You know what that says. I do. You already know. Into the cave we go. All right, so you guys know that I'm I'm into hunting, obviously. Um, I'm a fishing freak. I'm into just the outdoors in general. And the more the older I get, the more I am just getting into being a total outdoorsman. So that's you know, full camping, fishing. I like bushcraft, firecraft. I've gotten into archery more. I'm just trying to you know be a complete outdoorsman, basically. I, I read a couple of books on Indians last summer and it sent me down a rabbit hole of just, I was, just, I'm just blown away by the advanced uh, woodcraft, the ability to make some amazing bows and arrows from all these different um, Native American tribes. And so I got inspired to make my own bows and arrows. So I've been working on that the last few months. 
Uh, I'm trying to get good at it during the fishing season, get everything built and get good at it, get proficient so when hunting season comes around, I can accomplish my goal of getting an animal with my own bow and arrow. And this is something that, you know, I just, I want to do for me. And when I feel good at it, when I feel like very, really confident, I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing all this stuff, um, how I created it. I'm going to share some of it quickly with you here right now, but I'm still learning. I'm just soaking it up. And it's just been something really awesome that I enjoy. I, I, it's very gratifying to make, make a bow, make an arrow, and then go shoot it. And you're watching your arrow fly through the air and you've crafted every inch of everything there it's really cool it's a good feeling so these are some of the arrows that i've crafted so far and you know i've literally got i've got wood from uh, saplings and upper branches that i've cut and made like just full-blown um you know arrows from the woods and then i've also got just blank shafts that i've purchased that are really straight so like here's a couple right here I made my own little shield shaped uh, jig for making the fletching shape and then that's actually 30 pound braid on there that I've wrapped these with put a little fletching glue and that's that's helical and everything it's 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 pretty awesome these, these arrows spin pretty good I've made three bows so far the first one was an absolute piece of trash it'll shoot an arrow but um, it's twisty and it's it's terrible it's got knots all in it my second one I made out of ash um, tree from the yard here and it was a pretty good little bow it was a 48 inch little little short bow it was flinging pretty good I fire hardened it and it broke unfortunately um, I think I'm gonna try to do another one with ash and my current one that's working right now is a cedar bow I kind of want to use the cedar if it works out I've heard they explode really bad but uh, this is this is wood that's like in the area at where I hunt mostly. So that would be really cool. Keep it fully endemic. But the one that you really want and that the Comanches uh, were super fond of and honestly a lot of tribes was Bodark or um, Osage Orange. So I've got a rough cut bow. It's pretty much still a stave right here. Um, got it sealed with with wood glue on the back. I'm gonna let that dry for about six months and then I'm gonna fully uh, tiller it and make it into a shooting bow. And so maybe I'll use that one for the hunting season if the if the cedar one blows up. But let's uh, let's grab a couple arrows. You know, let's go fling a couple now that I've told you about it. Let's see what this bow can do. All right, let's see if we can hit this target at. Uh, I'm gonna say that's ten or twelve yards. Ooh, that's a hard shot. Got to repeat. Same thing you do every time in order to be accurate, just like a compound bow. Just a little different here, so I'm trying to get the get the hang of it with this bow set up. That one's in the woods. Here's a long shot. It's just one little mess up, and you're. You are out of the realm. Looking good. That's what we need to happen this fall. Let's see if we can uh, put a couple on old Bucky over here. Pretty much. Oof. Man, almost split my arrow. Oh, dang gum. Yeah, that deer would have ran away, but dang gum. <laughs> that group's pretty good. So just needed to make an adjustment. That's where I just naturally wanted to hit. All right, so that's my new vice right there. Natural archery, native, primitive archery, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's pretty challenging. Not a big swing dad. Yeah, you can kind of take it or leave it. Chime, uh, chime's a nice addition though. Mm-hmm, you got them. I come home to places there's always <laughs> something there's always new. Things. <laughs> it's because I have a lot of time to think about our house. There's ideas constantly rolling in my head how to improve the tree house. Amy, what are you doing up there? Um, I just I know how to get over the gate. 
You're scaring your dad. I only really know how to get over this gate. Okay. Little daredevil child. It's not supposed to rain anymore tonight, is it? No, I think we still have an afternoon chance. Okay. I'm going to postpone this. <laughs> I was gonna get in my boat and start cleaning it out, but it's gonna start raining. We gotta wait. Oh, you jumped. One last look at what is inside of the silver bullet main compartment, main box, you know, everyone wants to look at. Uh, this is one thing I really like about the Phoenix, is their tackle organization is pretty good. But my general organization thing is if, if there's something that I really like, I want to store a lot of colors in it, I just go with a money bag and, you know, like my worms, my flipping baits, uh, all that kind of stuff, and I'll just put them in those money bags like that. And then the hard baits obviously will go in, in the trays. And there's a much better way to store them. But I really don't put any plastics in those trays unless it is something that, just a couple of colors that I use a bunch. And I'm going to use a ton of them frequently, like trailers. You know, either spinnerbait trailers, jig trailers. Um, I'll throw those in there and just make a nice, juicy, big box like that. Ooh, that's a hefty one. That is a hefty one. I'm going to leave some stuff in here for the next dangler. And I've got just a ton of extra tackle from extra Ketchco stuff and Guggen stuff um, that I'm going to take up to the, for the high school uh, fishing. They have like a big barrel up at Fun and Sun where you can bring your extra plastics and baits and help out the high school kids. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's get started. stuff well y'all this is it saying goodbye to her it's kind of sad I need to, just need to do one thing the old girl we had our last trip together pretty good one had a good time out there caught some big fish I'm gonna give you one last, one last little send off here. To the silver bullet. Just gonna give you a little Coors attention here. Clean up that back end with a little Coors. I know you like those bubbles, it just gets all the all the dirt and grime and water spots off of you. Clean your shiny feathers and you can fly. You can fly for someone else now. It's okay. Good luck to the next angler. Well, if you never cleaned off the lake grime off your boat with a cold adult beverage, you're probably doing what you're supposed to do in life but uh just saying works in a pinch everything's pretty much out um left a couple rods in there left some extra uh swim baits some line some things like that some extra plastics and um she's ready to go oh gotta get my scale that's pretty much it want to make sure we have the scale for the next mondos this season and this is it y'all so uh, thank you for tuning in to uh, this home vlog a little bit of everything can't please everybody but just talking to you guys the classic seemed like everybody's into a little something on this channel so next video I'm gonna be picking up the brand new one and giving a tour and hopefully getting it wet big thanks again to all of y'all that have tuned in for all the years if you're new subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any outdoor action 
and God bless you in the great outdoors. I will see you on the next one. Heart shot right there.